Hey Grant, it's David at the Mountain, North Alabama, here with another update. It's been exactly two weeks ago since we gave you the update before, since you were here a month ago. And I what I wanted to do is show you how much higher the cereal rye has gotten in only two weeks. Now, we were kind of using a pole behind, you can see behind me, or maybe not see a redneck blind behind me. There's a pole right next to it. And that pole is probably eight, nine feet tall from where we're standing. You could see the top of that pole or a good bit of that pole. And now you can't. So that gives you an idea of how much taller the seal rise has become. And you can or might, you probably won't be able to see the redneck blind, which is behind me here, just straight, straight behind me. But what I wanted to do was show you the, how the height of the seal rye and how it's coming along. And it, it still has plant material in it. There really is no seed head whatsoever or seed inside the seed head at all. And uh, earlier when we were down here, the wind's kind of blowing today. And earlier the, the wind was blowing the pollen off of the cereal rye as the wind blew. And that's something I'd never seen before. So, so we got all the ingredients we need to start planting. We've got our cereal rye that's in the right stage that it needs to be to lay down that mat to suppress the weeds. The taller the better as far as I'm concerned. We've got, uh, we've got our seeds from green cover seed. We've got moisture and we got warm temperatures. I wanted to show you this field because out of four or five fields that we have in the bottom, a lot of the cereal rye is much, much taller than it is anywhere else. And we really don't know the reason why, but when you look behind me here, you can see these stems. Most of these stems are over seven feet tall. And, and that, that is going to do us a lot of good when we go to lay this mat down and we create that, that, that buffer zone to stop the weeds from germinating, as much tonnage of this stuff that we can produce, the better off we're gonna be from a weed control standpoint. So I'm really excited about this, and you've asked me to cut some of this stuff and send it off to Ward Lab and, and let them look at it and analyze it and exactly determine how much fertilizer value we're gonna get out of this and or organic matter. So. This is an important part of your system, and, 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 and I believe the more of this we can produce, the better off we're gonna be. So I hope, I'm looking forward to those results, and I hope you'll share them with me when you get them. Hey Grant, it's David at the Mountain again, North Alabama, and I wanted to show you the, one of the fields on top. Last time we were here, these plants of cereal rye were about knee high, maybe thigh high, a little bit more. But as you can see behind me, in two weeks, we've gotten this much growth out of it. And I was a little worried about uh, the fields that were on the top. Remember, because they're smaller and due to the size of our herd here, there was more pressure on these fields than there was in the bottom in the valley. So our seal rye is much thinner here, and I was a little worried about getting that mat, that good mat laid down. We're gonna get the mat. Uh, it's not gonna be as thick as it is in the valley but we're still gonna get a mat and that's what's important. So we're gonna up our uh, seed rate here for the fields on top because they're thinner. And, but we are gonna get a mat out of it, a much better mat than I thought. So with upping our seed rate and what mat we do have, I think it's gonna be a good combination. So stay with us as we take the journey through the planting season and on the end of the summer and into the fall.